scripture this morning. These are exciting days that we're in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost on me this morning. Hallelujah. Mighty anointing of God in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 1 of chapter 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel whose name was Belteshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, nor meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all three whole weeks. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river that is the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and looked, behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of Euphaz. His body was like burl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes were like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty, in me and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words and while I heard the sound of his words, I was in deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. Amen. Amen. And then suddenly a, ha a hand touched me and made me stand up, uh, on my knees, on the palms of my hands and he said, O oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright for I have now been sent to you while he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. He said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, from the first day that you set your heart to understand, to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Can you say amen to the word? God bless you. You can be seated. I want to preach on the thought today, pray it through. The Lord spoke to me, there will be an open heaven over this church for this week. That the people that determine that they're going to seek the face of God from the hours of 7 to 8 every night. And some of you, by you know logistics and, and where you live, you can't be here. But you can pray from the same time, 7 to 8. So you can join this prayer army this week from 7 to 8 p.m. And those of you that do that, there will be an open heaven over your head. There will be easy access into the mighty presence of God, the eternal. You're going to feel the Holy Spirit. You're going to hear His voice. There are great things because we are determined to go to the high places. Daniel was a man who was determined to be what God wanted him to be. And nobody, not even lions, could keep him from his devotion to God and the life of praying in the Spirit. Amen. And so I want to encourage us today that God wants us to do as Daniel did and to stand. You know, I, I just love the idea that Daniel stood by the banks of the Tigris River and waited for 21 days. I've often thought, what would have happened if he had, if he had given up in 20 days? What would have happened? What, what, he, he would never have received the visitation from heaven if he hadn't have stayed hooked up in his present commitment to God. And I'm saying to this church, stay hooked up in your commitment to God. If you're a part of this church and you love this church, you love prayer because that's what your pastor loves to do. And as you pray, God honors you. As you pray, you make a difference. As you pray, Hell rattles its cage and heaven answers with angels of war. As we pray, the Spirit of God breaks through in our lives. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so we see that God, God is in the business of answering the prayer of His people. And I want to give you about three reasons why you should come to prayer revival this week. Number one. It, the reason is because geese fly 72% further when they fly in formation. Geese, that, that kind. 
the flying geese. When they fly in formation, they fly 72% further than they can by themselves. Why? Because they're drafting off of each other. And when they fly in a V, the lead geese gets no relief, but every goose behind them receives help and flying. And that's the same reason why you need to be a part of what God's going to do this week is because something great is going to happen because God's people are going to come up here and get in formation. And when we form together in a prayer group, let me tell you, you we can go 72% further than we can with personal devotions at home. There is no comparison between personal devotions at home and prayer up here among God's people. We come into the heavenlies. We burn forth into the mighty move of God. We lift up our hearts and the Holy Spirit comes down. We get in formation and we can do what we cannot do by ourselves. Let me say it this way. Just when you show up in your car Monday night and you just pull up here and walk in the building, you're already ahead of the game. When you just walk in here, you've already gone further than you could go at home praying. Because you're in formation with God's people. Somebody say amen. amen. And the devil might jump on one of us, but a whole bunch of us. One will put 1,000 to flight. Two will put 10,000 to flight. Somebody say amen. amen. I like the idea of flying in formation. You two, come here. And you two, come here. Amen. Well, who, who's the lead, lead goose? Well, he's the leader. And he flies and takes all the airfoil, all the air resistance is against him. But then the next one stands right here at a little behind. A little behind me, turn the, to the face of the people. And a little behind like this. And the next one goes a little behind him out there. There you go. And then this one comes over here. And he's praying, Jesus, help me. And the pastor's out there taking the brunt on the devil. And he's fighting demons. And he's going against the opposition. And the wind is blowing. But he's up there praying in the Holy Ghost. And so every time I'm praying, I make it a little easier for this boy to get through. Where are you? Over here. Get in formation. Get in line. Amen. See? And if we had some more people, we could make a V going that way. And we can make a V going this way. And every person, we feed off of each other. The lead is pushing. The lead is pushing against the full airfoil. But every person behind is gaining ground. And when you walk into the presence of God where there's a prayer meeting, you're already lifted into the heaven. Somebody's been there in front of you and is praying. And the presence of God is pushing back the powers of darkness. And the victory is yours. Can I hear an amen in the house of God? Thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Daniel was determined to pray it through. It didn't matter how long it took. He was there for the long haul. Amen. What's the second reason why I should be a part of the prayer revival this week? Number two, because you can get pregnant in the spirit. When you come and pray with God's people, somebody say amen. The Lord gave me this thought this week when I was praying. He said, when Sarah became pregnant with hope, then she became pregnant in her womb. But God had to do some dealing with Sarah before she could have that baby. First problem, the biggest problem was her believing it. When God first said it, she laughed. Abraham, he said, as he visited the tent, Abraham fed him food. He said, you and your wife shall have a baby. And she's standing behind the tent flame. She goes, oh, me? I'm 90 years old. I'm going to have a baby? He's got to be joking. He's out of his head. Amen. Amen. My mom's here today. She's 85. Stand up, mom. Yeah. I didn't tell you to sit down. Stand up. <laughs> what would you do, Mom, if, if a preacher said, you're going to have a baby? I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay, thank you. You can sit down now. See? 
85-year-old women don't have babies. We, we, we know that. The door closed on that many years ago. The things that are impossible with man are possible with God. Nothing shall be impossible to him that believeth. And if God said it, God will do it. Don't worry about how hard it is. It's not, you're not going to do it anyway. God's going to do it. Don't worry how impossible it is. It's God the specialist in impossibility. He can take care of it. He can take nothing and make it something. Somebody say amen. And so here we find that Sarah had a problem with her faith. Her faith wasn't big enough to receive the baby in her womb. And so God had to work with Sarah. And God worked with her and worked with her and worked with her. And finally the Bible testifies that Sarah believed God. Sarah believed God. She finally got it. And when she got it, it took about 20 years, but when she got it, she became pregnant. And she gave birth to Isaac. And Ishmael's hated him ever since. <laughs> Amen. I told the Sunday school class this morning, I said, my Jewish neighbor next door wore a star David around his neck. He, he was, we were watering grass beside each other one time. And he said, I don't understand why everybody hates me. Just because I'm Jewish. What did I do to the world? I said, you brought Jesus into the world. That's what you did. And the devil hates Jesus. Come on. Yep. He said, well, I didn't do it. I said, but your great dad, granddaddy Abraham was the father of the faithful. Yep. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. We shouldn't marvel that the world hates us. Jesus said, the world hated me before it hated you, and it's going to hate you next. So just get ready for it. There's an antichrist spirit that's growing exponentially out there, and we just know that the, the, one of the reasons we need to be in prayer revivals is because God wants to do something and give us something in a seed form. The Lord spoke to me and said, if they will be faithful to this prayer meeting this week, I'm going to plant something in them as a seed, and it's going to grow to fruition. I'm going to give them something they've never gotten before, something they've longed for, some, something that was beyond, beyond, beyond. Maybe you've been praying for your children. Maybe you've been seeking God for their salvation. Maybe it's a healing in a family member. It's a deliverance. But God is going to drop something in us that is going to give birth. Can I hear an amen? amen. There is no birthing in the kingdom of God without prayer. All of you that got saved, you were birthed in the kingdom because somebody prayed for you. And you know it. Amen. And God's going to plant some seeds at the beginning of this year. And you're going to see some birth. How many of you like to see some birth? Some spiritual birth. Amen. Number three reason why you should be a part of this this week is because this church is a mighty church. You say, well, there's a lot of churches bigger than this church. I'm not talking about size. I'm not talking about how many bodies you can pack in a building. That's only one level. I'm talking about not the physical. I'm talking about the spiritual. We may look small to the world, but let me tell you, in the eyes of the Holy Spirit, this church is a mighty church because it's a mighty church of prayer. Anything that's mighty in God is mighty in the Spirit. And the Spirit is mighty in us when we pray. And spiritually, we are mighty in God. We are a spiritual force to be reckoned with. The Lord said this so strongly to me. Tell the people, pick up their head, square their shoulders. There's no power. There's no weapon. There's no spirit. There's no demonic entity. There is no power that Lucifer has that can stand against them. They are in a church that is a spiritual force to be contended with. Hallelujah. And in the name of Jesus, we can pray it down. We can pray through it. We can pray it off. We can pray through and see mighty things happen. And this church is a mighty church. You should be thanking God you're part of this church. Thank God you come here every Sunday. Thank God you're around people that know how to pray. Thank God you're in a church where the Holy Ghost manifests. Thank God you're in a church where you can shout and praise God and speak in tongues and nobody's going to tell you to go off to another room. Thank God you're in a place where the power of God can do a work in your body. You can be healed where you are right now in your seat because there's a spiritual anointing in this house. The Spirit of God is here today and God can do anything for you right where you are. Right now, you can be healed, you can be delivered, 
delivered, you can be set free because you're in a powerful place. Hallelujah. 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 We believe God can do anything. I said we believe God can do anything. Hallelujah. Sunday school teacher was teaching this little primary class. And she said today, she was showing on the picture graph, today I'm teaching on Jonah and the whale. And she said, we have since discovered since this Bible story of long ago that even though a, a, a whale is the largest mammal on earth, it has a very small throat. And it would be virtually impossible for a whale to swallow a human whole. So we know that this is not true. And the little boy in the Sunday school class lifted his hand and said, can I say something? The teacher said, yes, Johnny, what do you have to say? He said, I disagree with you. If the Bible said that the whale swallowed Jonah, then when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jonah what it felt like to get swallowed by that big fish. And the teacher was irritated and said, well, what if Jonah didn't make it to heaven? What if Jonah went to hell? He said, then you ask him. <laughs> Apparently, the boy didn't think the teacher was going to make it. If God said it, it happened. If God spoke it, it came to pass. If God made a promise, it's going to come to pass for you. Well, I prayed God in 2014 and 2015, 2016. Hadn't happened yet. Pick up your shoulders and quit feeling sorry for yourself. You're still here. You're still walking. You're still moving. You can still pray. You can still believe God. God's promises are not negated because it didn't happen on your timetable. You're not God. You can't call the shots. Why don't you quit trying to be Holy Ghost Junior? And why don't you just grow up and say, I believe God. I believe God. If God said it, God will do it. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Too many people wanting God to be accountable to them. God's not accountable to you. He's God. But he is accountable to his word. And if he said it, he does it. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fourth reason you need to be in this prayer revival is because there is big wind and waves coming. And prayer is the anchor for your soul. And there's a lot of people drifting out there in the sea of sin. Drifting. Used to be anchored right here. Used to be here for all the services, here at the prayer meetings. Today they're drifting, 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 drifting. They're at the beach, they're at the ocean, they're in the restaurants, they're at home watching sports, they're, they're playing with their boat, and they're doing all these things, and they, they used to be here. What happened? They lost their anchor. What was their anchor? Prayer. They quit praying. Nobody, nobody, nobody can make it through a storm without an anchor to hold you in place. We need it. We got to have it. Prayer will put your feet on the rock and make you stand there. Prayer will make you strong. <clears throat> Prayer will give you conviction. Somebody say amen. amen. Prayer will break rebellion off of your life. It will break the spirit of disobedience off of you. It will crush the hard heart that you have. And it will give you a soft, broken, tender, malleable heart. Prayer gives you the eternal perspective over what your life really consists of. When you pray, you get flashes of eternity that the Holy Spirit brings. And you realize you are destined to live forever with God. And whatever trial you're going through, you can call it light affliction. Somebody say amen. amen. <clears throat> so the Lord told me, he said, ask the people to fast one meal a day. How many radicals do I have here that will fast one meal a day for this week? Shoot, you do that sometimes anyway. When you oversleep and you're in your alarm clock and you left it, you forgot to set it, and you wake up two hours late, you go, oh, my God. And you call your office, call your job. Oh, I've had a crisis. I'll be there later. 
crisis of sleep. <laughs> and the Lord said, tell them to bring their oil every night. He's already spoken to me two or three things he wants us to do with oil. We're going to see great things happen this week. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love that Daniel was called a man greatly loved by God. Three times in the narrative, God said, Oh man, greatly beloved by God. So many times I've read that and wept and thought, God, let me be that man. When God looks on me or talks to me through an angel, he'd say, Oh Doug, greatly beloved by God. Man, is there anything better than that? Nope. Woo! Why? Because he was a man that knew what it was to fast. He could bring his physical body into subjection. He was a man that knew what it was to stay faithful and diligent. Amen. Amen. And the oil. The oil is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. And when we pray anointing with oil, it's not just a ritual. It releases the power of God on another level. Everybody say another level. Amen. Why? Because God said do it. Anything God says do will bring more power into your life. And after you get through doing that this week with this oil, you can keep this oil and use it in your prayer, in the things of God. Somebody say amen. amen. I heard Bill Winston preach this week, and he said that there was a woman came to him in his church and said, Pastor said, I'm so distraught. He said, why? She said, on my street, on my block, the drug dealers have moved in. And they're there every day from 4 in the afternoon till about 2 in the morning. There's constant traffic with them handing out drugs on our street. And she said, I'm so upset. And she said, it's, I know somebody's going to get killed. I know a drug deal is going to get bad. I know they're going to do a drug bust and going to be shooting bullets around my house and my house right in front of where they stand. Brother Winston said to her, do you have any oil? She said, yes, I have some oil. He said, how much? She said, well, I have a little bottle. He said, you need a couple of gallons. She said, well, I don't have two gallons of anointing oil. He said, do you have any motor oil? She said, yeah, I got a whole box of motor oil. He said, then get the motor oil and pray over it. And the power is not in the olives anyway. The power can be in motor oil if you sanctify it. I don't recommend anointing with motor oil, but if you need a lube job or whatever, maybe it'll help you. I don't know. But it, it's the symbol of it. She put all that oil in a bucket. And obeyed what the man of God told her to do. He said, you take authority over the strong man that has moved in on your neighborhood. And you pour that oil down the sidewalk. All the way on your block. You walk that block and you pour that oil and you pray in the spirit. Amen. And she did it and she anointed the whole block all the way down the sidewalk. And walked back and said, Lord, now protect this house and this block. She said they came back the next day at 4 o'clock, but they only stayed an hour, and they acted nervous and irritated, and they got in her car and left. And she said, it's been weeks, and I haven't seen anything of them. The strong man moved into the neighborhood until a stronger man came in and took their authority away. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you, God wants us to use this oil for the year of 2017. You're going to need it. You're going to need the knowledge I'm giving. You're going to need the prayer we're going to do. You're going to need the anointing in your life this year. They're going to run into some things that nothing but God can change. You're going to need this oil. Everybody stand with me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I want everybody in this house to step out. Come to the Lord's altar this morning. 
We've got communion for you. We've got bottles of oil. We've got a prayer need card that you can take. But I want you to come first before you pick up all this stuff, and I want you to pray with me. We're going to pray together. We're going to believe together. We're going to stand in the gap. Things are going to change this year. You're going to start the new year in a powerful way because of this commitment to God in the name of Jesus. Lord, I love you and I worship you. You're worthy to be praised. Lord, I love you and I worship you. You are worthy to be praised. Lord, I love you and I worship you. You. you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Now lift both those hands and claim your victory this morning. Come on. Pray in tongues. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Shandaviya malakota balada la la bakata la 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 baka. Lift it up to God. Hallelujah. Be bold in the Lord. Be confident in God today. Let God touch you. Let God lift you. Let God minister to you this morning. Oh, in a God of a cotton of a yep, a London of a Sunday. Eat it and I'm a shunner and I'm a sunder and I'm a cotton and I'm a Minister to him right now, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This one organism. We're like one, one thing. We're, we're many members, but we're all one body. We're one body. Amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord. So I want you to join hands with your brothers and your sisters. You're not alone. We're drafting together. We're, we're moving together. We're flying in formation. This church is going somewhere spiritually. We're powerful in God today. This church is a powerful spiritual house, a spiritual place where the Holy Ghost moves. You're in a place of anointing right now. You're in a place of spirit. We're flying in formation right now. And you can do more in this prayer than you can do at home. Right now, just pray in the spirit. Pray in tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost. There's power in united prayer. We're one body. Glory to God. We're moving forward in formation. We're flying forward. In the name of Jesus, Sadaba Katabayada, Ila Lalaba Shada Baretta Pala Lalaba Kada Lalaba Ki, Ila Lalaba Lada Lalaba Shata Lalaba Lada Lalaba Laka. Glory, 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 Yada Balato Tala Lalaba Lada Lalaba Shaya Lalaba Ki. Jesus' name, Jesus. 
Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory.